Uh, Chile, um, first couple of weeks in the new role, director of cricket performance. Uh, just tell us a bit about kind of how you know how much you've enjoyed it and how much you're looking forward to uh, to it moving forward. Oh, very much so, really. I mean, it has been a bit of a whirlwind, if I'm honest. Um, thrown in quite quickly after the Lord's game. Um, obviously delighted to get the opportunity and very quickly I suppose you you realise the the magnitude of the job and the responsibilities that you have and in some ways that's really exciting and something that I've you know part of the reason was I was interested in the role uh, but also quite challenging as well so I had a lot of information taken on over the last three weeks really uh, I had lots of meetings with lots of different people trying to understand some of the areas that and maybe my knowledge hasn't been as as good on, uh, but also just cracking on with the job at the same time. I think that's really the best way to to learn. But it's been really exciting, yeah. Just tell us a bit about the job. Tell us kind of what the role entails. I suppose ultimately you're you're overseeing the whole cricket department. Um, I mean the responsibilities of the old role, Paul's old role with the foundation have diminished a little bit. It's still a really important relationship for me uh, and I've just come out of a meeting with John now but um, I suppose the primary responsibilities around the men's and the women's professional programs and pathways overseeing all of that um, and then working closely with the foundation John Murphy and his team uh, around trying to ensure some alignment through that that process really so um, I think that the, the key thing you realise quite quickly is the people you're responsible for and that that is obviously a hugely important part of the job and something that um, well ultimately I'm really looking forward to delving into. We'll touch on the men's side of the game in a sec but in terms of the women's game um, you know how much you're looking forward to getting involved in that because obviously it's grown so much over the last few years and that continues to grow and the, you know, the improvements that are made in the women's game just continue at pace. Yeah, and it's, I suppose, in some ways, it's a really exciting time to, to start learning a little bit more about that world. I mean, obviously, I've been intensely involved in men's professional cricket for the last few years. Um, and it's not an area that I have a huge amount of knowledge of, other than um, speaking to Paul Shaw and David reasonably regularly. Um, but I'm looking forward to starting to understand a little bit more about it and how I can offer um, David and Paul support across that program. Um, I'm interested to go and see some. I haven't watched a huge amount of uh, women's cricket because obviously our our men's program is is that extensive that uh, the summer just makes it challenging to do that. So I think certainly getting round to the summer, um, really looking forward to going to 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 watch that world and learn more and see and and sort of build on the opportunity that, that it feels like women's cricket has. Just today, uh, there's been an announcement around uh, extra kind of uh, professional contracts for women's players. How important is it that you know we do you know give these full-time contracts to those girls that really deserve it, and then you know the uh, you know the winter training they get and the access to the facilities? How important is that? Well, I think with with any sort of it doesn't matter what job you do, the the more support you can get, the more financial support and time you have at. at um, a chance to develop it is is really important. So I think there's six contracts at the minute that were um, given out by the ECB, but they're still only 20. In my understanding, I only found out this morning, they're only 20 hour a week contracts. So, you, you know, some of the girls on even on the, those contracts are supplementing their their uh, lives, livelihood with other jobs and, and, and really I suppose the sooner you can move away from that and give people full-time opportunities to to develop um, then you'll see the skill set improve. I know Lancashire have committed to, to adding a couple more contracts onto that which is obviously great for, for the girls that receive them and the women and girls that receive them but ultimately, the more resources, the more time, the more facilities they have available to them, the more opportunities they have to improve. Just in terms of the men's game, uh, just thoughts and reflections on last year. Obviously, it was a, felt like another good year for the club on the field. We didn't quite get there in terms of the championship stuff, but how do you come? Kind of... Yeah, I, I think overall, James, we've got to be quite pleased with the, with the quality of cricket that we played. Um, you know, when you do delve a bit deeper into the statistics, 
we're quite clearly one of the, the, the strongest teams out there over the last two or three seasons. Um, and I've sort of proved that in a number of ways by competing strongly across formats. Um, but ultimately, everybody's in it to try and win trophies. And I suppose a, a, a strong year is tinged with a degree of disappointment from everyone involved. Uh, that you don't walk away with a trophy because ultimately that's that's all what, what, why you're doing it and everyone puts a lot of hard work and effort in right from the middle of November uh, through the winter and all the way through the season and I have to say that the lads walked off the field at Egberth I know Lords was a disappointment but the lads walked off the field at Egberth and just looked absolutely spent you know it looked like they'd given their all um, and and we can't ask much more from that um, I suppose our challenge is to to deal with the uncertainty and unpredictability that exists within county cricket to still try and get ourselves over the line. We're doing that well. You know, we get players taken off us for, for international duties. We have negotiations around IPL involvement and all that sort of stuff. And the 100, the impact of the 100 on the county system has been quite significant. So you're, you're juggling a degree of uncertainty and. Uh, unpredictability around how your squad might sort of develop and pan out over the season to try and still remain competitive and we're doing that we're just not quite getting over the line and I suppose that that will form a lot of our conversations knowing that that uncertainty is going to remain it's not going to go away and you have to try and think oh, well, how can we mitigate ourselves against that and, and, and try and go that extra step but overall, I think we're really well placed. We're a well balanced squad. We've got lots of good players. We've got a lovely blend of experience and, and good young players. And we've got a fabulous coaching team. Just on those young players you mentioned, obviously you've been involved in, it in the last couple of years. But how important is that ethos for Lancashire to, you know, to continue that, um, to bring those young players through the, the age group and the academy and then you know, give them opportunities in the first time? Well, it's, link, it's linked to the previous question, really, in, the, in that you know, I've already explained how there's a degree of uncertainty that exists around player availability uh, and the impact of the amount of cricket that is played across the globe on, on even a county setup. And it's, our, it's, it's my philosophy, but it's also our philosophy as a club that the best way, way to prepare yourself for that is to ensure you have a continuous stream of quality players coming into the system. Recruitment is difficult in county cricket. They don't, you know, it's not like football. It's not a transfer system. The good players don't come around that often because counties don't want to let them go. So, um, so recruitment can be challenging, and, and the overseas market is, is is saturated as well now because of the amount of cricket that, that, that those players have available for them as well. So, when you take that all into account, the one area you do have some control over is is producing your own players and, I, and that for me has been a priority over the last two or three years and I made that quite clear to, to Paul when I was in my previous role around the importance of that and I, I, that hasn't changed in fact it's probably only sort of, I suppose evolved even and become even more of a important aspect to be aware of so ensuring that that system and how we do things and how we develop players as, as robust and efficient as possible to ensure that we keep that stream of quality players coming into the professional squad. I think that is the best way to, to be able to deal with the environment we work in. Uh, you look at you know the likes of Tom Hartley, George Balderson, Jack Gawley, all these young guys, they've, you know, they've really come through the system over the last couple of years. And, you know, whilst they've, they've um, you know, they've really taken their opportunities, haven't they, when they've been given that the chance to play at the first team. That must be, you know, you must look at those guys with a real sense of, you know, proud and, you know, proud and, you know, pleased that the system does continue to, to churn out these brilliant young players. Yeah, I suppose, um, I suppose you're quite right that the, the, the crop of young players that are coming into the um, professional squad at the minute have, have been a result of um, a programme that's already doing lots of good stuff and we have worked very hard on on that over the last two years and people have worked hard on that previous to that and we've 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 always had a good record of of producing homegrown talent and again it's a real key focus for the club to ensure we continue to do that 
we have a great catchment. You know, the, 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 there's lots of cricket clubs, lots of passion for the county across the cricket clubs in the region. And, um, you know, that's also being an interesting part of my, my job is to try and link up with, with the foundation and the clubs and, and try and almost engage them in a wider piece around um, trying to help us with the development of those players in the system to ultimately be Lancashire players. So, you know, I, I, I certainly don't, I, th I think it's working. You know, the, the, it, that's what you've just mentioned and the players you've just mentioned is testament that the system is working pretty well. But ultimately, I think it's a case of just, you're always looking for areas to try and improve, um, fight for additional resources to say, well, what, what do we currently do and how can we continue to, to keep moving forward to ensure that we are doing the best that we can possibly uh, do. Those young players are, are, are great and they're, they're really great to work with. It's great to see them impact first team cricket like they have in, in quite a short period of time. And, and Tom going from a Tom Hartley going from a uh, you know low grade pick in the hundred to then becoming almost their primary bowler and bowling key key overs in the power play is a you know, testament to to him and, and the people that have worked closely with him over the last couple of years. One young player who's just signed their first kind of rookie contract, George Bell. Um, you know another one off the production line. I'm actually looking forward to seeing him in and around the squad. Yeah, well, I, I'm all, I, I'm always a fan of seeing that young talent coming through. You know, I suppose I'm very passionate about that and have been, you know, since since I started back at Lanx as a coach in 2014. Um, the young players are often they're so excited and there's so much energy and there's so much drive and from them and, and excitement around their cricket that they're they're often really enjoyable to work with and. And George really, you know, was a real s probably standout from that group this year with some of those attributes. It wasn't just George's uh, skill set that we were impressed by, although, you know, he, he proved how competent he was with the bat against in lots of different um, opportunities he's had last last summer. But it was all, also his, you know, his attitude and his drive and his his willingness to learn and, and always challenging himself that really sort of stepped out. I mean, we, we, we have a really good crop of players in the academy at the minute and it was a really difficult decision at the end of the season to try and figure out how we we're going to move forward with it. And at the minute, um, we've still got some good players there who we, we can see coming through as well. Um, but George has been the one who this, this year has uh, been offered full rookie contract terms and I'm sure he'll take that opportunity with both hands. You touched on uh, recruitment earlier, obviously we brought in Phil Sott from Sussex, uh, you know, that's, a, that's a good signing for the club, isn't it? It's a really exciting signing, yeah. I mean, I, I, I didn't know Phil very, very well and obviously I didn't have a huge amount to do with the process because Paul and, and Glenn were heavily involved in that, but I met Phil for the first time um, last week and really really enjoyed his company for, for an hour it was it was really nice to get to know him and he, he had a real energy around him as well and um, I think I, I certainly came away from that meeting feeling really positive about the impact he will have on our group uh, again not just his skill set you're also looking at the person um, we, we know he's a more than capable player he's, he's represented his country this this summer, uh, he's usually dynamic in the white ball formats, but he has also a real passion talking to him over a coffee. He has a real passion for the four day game as well, which was really in, you know, encouraging to hear because again, it's cert certainly one of my beliefs that you know, the, the, the four day game still is, is a hugely important part of what we do. And, and we want players who want to try and be as uh, effective as possible across all formats really and Phil certainly gave me that impression when I, when I met him for coffee and he's very excited about getting going and I, I think he's a great addition to the squad. And just to, to throw another name at you, Josh Bannon, someone you've worked with for quite a few years now. Yeah. Uh, he's had a great couple of years and it's come later in an in England Lions call up where he goes to Australia next week. Again, you must be just really delighted to see how he's progressed and got that England call. Yeah, I suppose as a coach, the, you know, they're, they're the moments that you really, um, you, you do get a real sense of pride around, that you, you've worked with a player for a long period of time. Um, ultimately, it's the player who gets there with the way that they approach things. It's, it's the, their, um, 
they've been the people who've, who've earned the right to be on their tour. But as a coach, I suppose you, you, you know that you've played your small part in that. And that's why you do it, really, to start seeing someone like Josh, who I've worked with now f since he was under 17, um, start seeing him realise the potential that you've probably seen in, in him right throughout, really. And, and not just you, other people have seen in him as well. Uh, and he's starting to build the beliefs that he is capable of playing at the top level. And I've just come away from a session with him this morning and, um, you know, it's great to see someone just look so excited about the opportunity that he's got coming up and he thoroughly deserves it. His, his cricket over, I certainly feel like his cricket this season has, has had a, a much higher degree of consistency around it, uh, not just with his performances, but his preparation and his approach and his mentality, he's starting to see a, a more mature and disciplined approach from from a player who you know has already, already always had a, a lot of potential. And I, when, when situations get like this, I just really look forward to waking up and looking at the scorecards and in the winter and seeing how he's impacting that environment because I know for a fact that he's fully worthy of being there and he's more than capable of holding his own in that environment. Just another one, Liam Livingston, again, we've seen it for a number of years, but how pleasing and nice is it to see, to, for him to show what he can do on, on, a, on a world stage now at the World Cup? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's great to see him get, I mean, he, he sort of flew through the 100, didn't he, and, and really was on top of his game. But uh, again, we've seen that talent for the last three or four years. I remember being in the second team with Liam a few years ago, knowing that this... He needed to move on from this and he needed to get his opportunity, which uh, Ashley gave him back in 2017, maybe, I think. Um, but when you flick that many balls at a, at a batter and you, and you know the, the, the capability and the potential and the skill set that they have, once they start piecing it all together, which Liam, to be fair to him, has always been very good at sort of figuring out his, his, his game and his strengths and learning from the experiences they have out on the field. and. Um, and now got a great opportunity out in Dubai to really, you know, make an impact for his country and try and help them win a trophy. Cool. That's it, John. Thank you, mate. Is that everything? All good. Cut that.